Who's ready for some free response? A 0.345 gram sample of anhydrous beryllium oxalate, which contains an inert impurity, was dissolved in sufficient water to produce 100 milliliters of solution. A 20.0 milliliter portion of the solution was titrated with potassium permanganate. The balanced equation for the reaction that occurred is as follows. Boom. The volume of 0 0.0150 molar potassium permanganate required to reach the equivalence point was 17.80 milliliters. Part A. Identify the substance being oxidized in the titration reaction. All right, let's jump in here and do some oxidation numbers. Hydrogen ion has an oxidation number of plus one. Oxygen is going to be minus two, which means the manganese is going to be plus seven. In oxalate, the oxygen again will be minus 2. The carbon is going to be plus 3. Manganese 2 plus, easy enough, plus 2. All right, carbon dioxide oxygen is minus 2. Carbon is plus 4. Water oxygen is minus 2. Hydrogen is plus 1. All right, let's compare. Manganese starts with an oxidation number of plus 7, finishes as an oxidation number of plus 2, which means it's been reduced. Carbon goes from plus three to plus four, which means that it's been oxidized. All right, so as we look to earn this point, all we're asked to do is identify. Here, I would accept either just carbon as the thing that's being oxidized, or you could also put the oxalate ion, which contains the thing that is being oxidized. All right, let's keep going. Part B. For the reaction at the equivalence point, Count up the number of moles of each of the following. B part I, permanganate ion. Okay, we are using 0 0.0150 molar potassium permanganate, and we used 17.80 milliliters of it. We're going to use our molarity equation to solve for number of moles. Plug in the molarity of 0 0.0150 molar, X over our volume in liters, which is 0 0.0178. Eight zero. Calculator time. 0 0.0150 times 0 0.0178. Enter. Using correct significant figures, 2.67 times 10 to the minus 4 moles of permanganate. Boom. Which brings us to B part II. We need moles of oxalate ion. Well, we just determined the number of moles of permanganate. As I look at the equation provided, permanganate ion and the oxalate ion have a 2 to 5 relationship. So let's do some conversions. For 2 moles of permanganate ion, I'll react 5 moles of oxalate ion. Calculator time. Times five, enter, five, five, two, enter. That takes us to 6.68 times 10 to the minus 4 moles of oxalate ion. Boom. Another point earned. Brings us to part C. It says calculate the volume in milliliters of CO2 gas collected at 750 millimeters mercury and 25.0 degrees Celsius when the equivalence point has been reached. Again, anytime we're talking about a gas and we're given volume, pressure, temperature, probably going to use our good friend Pivnerd. Now it's asking us to solve for volume. So I rearrange my Pivnerd equation to look like this. First thing I need to solve is number of moles of CO2 gas collected when the equivalence point has been reached. Well, let's think back to the previous two parts that we just worked on. You could use either moles of permanganate or moles of oxalate. I'm going to use moles of permanganate ion, which is 2.67 times 10 minus 4 moles of permanganate. I'm going to convert that to moles of CO2. To determine that relationship, I'm going to again look at permanganate, but this time I'm going to compare it to CO2. For every two moles of permanganate ion I react, I'm going to generate 10 moles of carbon dioxide. So our relationship here, 10 to 2. Calculator time. 2.67 times 8 minus 4. Close parentheses. Times 10. Enter. Divide by 2. Enter. Gives me 1.34 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of CO2. All right, let's just plug this into our Pivnert equation. Our number of moles, 1.34 times 10 to the minus 3. Which gas constant am I going to use? Time for the formula chart. 
Again, as you scan your gas constants, you're given several of them. You have a couple different options. I just like to look at the pressure unit and then choose the R value that matches. Remember that millimeters mercury and tor are equivalent. So here's the gas constant I'll be using. Times 62.36 liters times millimeters mercury per mole Kelvin. Don't forget your temperature needs to be in Kelvin. To do that, you add 273, so 25.0 plus 273. All of that over my pressure, 750 millimeters mercury. All right, calculator time. Parentheses, one, one, three, four, second E, minus three, close parentheses, times 62.36, inch, times 25 plus 273, close parentheses, inch, divided by 750, inch. Our volume in liters, 0.0332, liters feeling great about myself but remember and you're encouraged to do this anytime you're explicitly asked for units be sure to underline that don't miss an easy point you did all the hard work now just convert to milliliters to do that liters over milliliters one liter a thousand milliliters which means i've got 33.2 milliliters boom final answer correct units part d Calculate the total number of moles of oxalate ion that were present in the 100 milliliter of prepared solution. Now wait a minute. Hold phone. I thought we already solved for moles of oxalate ion. Right up here, B part, I, I. But remember, as you look further back, we only used a 20 mil portion of the original 100 mil solution to perform the titration. So this number of moles that we solved for of oxalate ion was just the number of moles in the 20 milliliters of solution. So how do we determine the number of moles that's in the original 100 mil sample? Well, let's compare 100 milliliters to 20 milliliters. It is five times larger. In other words, we're gonna have five times the number of moles that we had in the 20 milliliter sample. And we already determined in the 20 milliliter sample that we had 6.68 times 10 to the minus four moles. So 6.68 times 10. So all we need to do is multiply that by five. 6.68 to second E minus four. In the original 100 mil sample, we have 3.34 times 10 to the minus three moles of oxalate ion. Boom. Brings us to part E for excellent. Calculate the mass percent of beryllium oxalate solid in the impure 0.345 gram sample. Okay, we're doing percent by mass, which is again, the mass of the part, in this case, the beryllium oxalate, over the mass of the sample or the whole. And then don't forget, multiply by 100. Keep in mind with these free response questions, many times you're gonna use the previous parts to answer the parts that are later on in the problem. We're trying to figure out the mass of beryllium oxalate. We're trying to figure out the mass of the sample. We already know the mass of the sample is 0.345 grams, total mass of the sample. If we can figure out the mass of just the beryllium oxalate in that sample, we'll be good to go. As I look back, in part D, we solve for the number of moles of oxalate ion that was in the 100 mils of prepared solution. And remember that 100 mils of prepared solution was prepared by taking the 0.345 gram sample and dissolving it in water. So if we know how many moles of oxalate ion, we also know how many moles of beryllium oxalate there were originally in the sample. So if I have 3.34 times 10 to the minus three moles of oxalate, I can determine simply by looking at the ratio in the compound, how many moles of beryllium oxalate there were. And as I look at the ratio of beryllium to oxalate and beryllium oxalate, it's a one to one ratio. Then we'll just convert to grams moles of beryllium oxalate. Molar mass of beryllium oxalate is 97.03. All right, let's calculate this up. times one divided by one times 97.03. So we have 0.324 grams of beryllium oxalate in our original impure sample. But don't stop there. We weren't looking for the mass, we were looking for the mass percent. So if we have 0.324 four grams of beryllium oxalate in our 0.345 gram sample divided by 0.345 
it's times 100. It's, then our percent by mass is 93.9% beryllium oxalate. Boom. And we are done.